Ford error code B1239 seems to be very common with the Ford Escape Hybrid. It turned out to be the blend door motor for the rear AC. The symptoms I'm experiencing are a wrench icon on the dash with no other codes. And a slight drip here behind the driver's side rear tire. It looks like it's coming from a factory installed drain. So it might be condensation or water that leaked in through the vent. Either way, I gotta check it. So I'm gonna hook up the scan tool and pull codes. My typical Innova scan tech couldn't read that code. So I had to hook up a PC in order to be able to get a little bit deeper into the troubleshooting process. There's an access panel right here in the back. So I decided to go inside and do some interrogation see what I can find and look what's in there. How oh, cool, there's a little air filter right here. This one's pretty dirty. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put that back in. Since removing the filter, I can see down into the housing. I decided to use a scope camera to see if there's anything further down there this is another tool that I don't use very often. It connects to the phone, and in the past, it's been a real lifesaver. I'm going to get it out today and hope that it still works. It really is just plug and play. Turn it on, launch the Wi-Fi, and then connect the app on your phone. With this camera, I have the hook attached to it so that that way if I find anything in there, maybe I can pick it out. I don't know what I'm going to expect, but I'm hoping not to find any real leaks. I guess what I'm really after is I want to be able to see where that water is leaking into that drain. I'm going to go ahead and try to check all four corners and I'm going to give this thing a pretty good inspection. For how dirty that filter was, the inside of this box is relatively clean. I'm actually pretty surprised. I don't see any signs of damage or wear on any of the parts down here. So I don't think this is going to be my issue. Honestly, it's good to be as thorough as possible. It never hurts to do a little extra troubleshooting or diagnosis before just going ahead and swapping parts. I want to make sure I get to the real root cause of the problem. All right, and now it's time to tear down. I'm start pulling these panels off. That came off a lot easier than I thought too. It was only held in by clips. There was no bolts at all. And right here is the blend door motor. This looks like the original one that was installed on the vehicle when it was factory new. Now I'll unplug the harnesses and see what size bolt is holding this thing in. It looks like it's pretty easy so far. Ah, uh, what size? It's kind of small. I think I'm going to try a quarter. Pause. That was definitely not it. It was a 730 seconds. One of those tiny wrenches that came with your tool set and you're like, I'll never use this. It's almost like a toy wrench, but it definitely worked. You know, I got to say, this is the first time I've ever used this wrench. Kind of glad I have it, but definitely not the fastest way to move. I also have a 732 on a ratchet wrench. This might work a little bit better, but it's still a really tight fit. I'm not sure that this is going to work any better, but let's give it a try. These are honestly more like screws with bolt heads, coarse thread into plastic. 
ABS plastic. It shouldn't be too tough. It is just a tight fit. I know I can get it with a little patience though. That always wins the race. And just like that, I got the first one out. All right, all right, now that's two down. This last one promises to be the hardest, but that never stopped me before. I don't mind this too much. I mean, you don't have to lay down or slide under some dash or be all in the engine bay. I figured at this point I'd share with you the Ford part number. I ended up ordering the replacement from the car ID website. The sad part is the shipping cost more than the actual part. Not too bad though, because it was still under $30. I'll pause the video here until I can get the rest of the three screws out. Then I'll pick back up where I leave off. Once those three screws are removed, the blower motor controller slides right out. You can see the arm that actuates from the motor right here in the back. The arm has a keyed sprocket design so it only fits one way. It'd be pretty difficult to mess this one up. I just lined up the sprocket and slid it right back into place. Here on the lower corner, there's a cross shape that you have to line up in order to be able to get everything to pop back in, but that's it. Really, really easy. I reinstalled the 732nd screws and reconnected the harnesses, and it's done. Since the blend door motor control is so old, I'm sure it failed. You can see here that that arrow doesn't line up anymore, but it still has the original part number. How fun is that? It's got a time and a date stamp on it. Oh well, this thing is out of here. On to the next big test. Start up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And for the win, no more yellow wrench. Looks like that was the piece that solved it. Hey, thanks a lot for coming along on this journey with me. We're all in this thing together. I'm glad I've got you. And trust me, I'm here for you. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. And if I never see you again,